a mechanical engineer by profession. First, I congratulate you for the beautiful speech you have delivered. Now, my question is, water is called by different names in different languages, like in English as water, in Hindi as Pani, in Tamil as Tani. Similarly, if God is either called Ram or Jesus, is it not one and the same? So that was the question that water in different languages can be called as water in English, Pani in Hindi, Tani in Tamil. Similarly, God is one. Can we not call him by Ram or Jesus, etc.? Peace be upon him. As I mentioned in my talk, the Holy Quran says in Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse number 110, Holidullah Abidur Rahman, Ayatma Tadu, follow Allah's small husna. Say, call upon him by Allah or by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belongs the most beautiful name. You can call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by any name, but it should be a beautiful name and it should not conjure up a mental picture. It should contain the qualities of Almighty God. And the same message is repeated in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 8. In Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 180. As well as in Surah Al-Hashar, chapter 59, verse number 24, which says, to Allah belongs the most beautiful name. You can call him by any name, but it should not conjure up a mental picture. Regarding a question that water is called by different names in different languages, and I know about it. In English, it's called as water. In Hindi, as Pani. In Tamil, as Tani. In Arabic, it's called as Mai. In Surah Alambia, chapter 21, verse number 30. In Sanskrit, it's called as Apa. In Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 7, verse number 4. In Shuddha Hindi, it's called as Jal. In Gujarati, as Jal or Pani. In Marathi, as Pani, it's called as in Kannad, it's called as Nir. In Telugu, Nir. And in Malayalam, as Vellam, various languages. You can call. <laughs> I gave you only 10 examples. Quran gives 99 attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there's no objection if you call water in any language as long as it is water in any language. But it should be water. It should not be something else. For example, if suppose someone comes and tells me that I have been advised by my friend that every day in the morning I should have one glass of pani. I know pani means water, so I understand what he's saying. But then he continues, but when I have that one glass of pani, I feel like vomiting. I ask him, why do you feel like vomiting? So he tells me, because the water stinks. It is yellowish in color. Later I realized that what he's talking is not pani, it is urine. <laughs> so somebody told him that you have one glass of urine, but the name he gave was pani. So you can call water by pani, tani, mani, apa, pani, no problem. But it should be water. You can call water by any name. But anything else besides water, neither can you call it water, neither can you call it pani, neither can you call it tani, neither can you call it as mine. Water as water you can call, but something else as water you can't call. People may think that what? An illogical example. Even an ignorant person can make out the difference between urine and water. Only a fool will not know the difference between urine and water. And I agree with them that even an ignorant person knows the difference between urine and water. Similarly, those people who know the concept of Almighty God, the correct concept, they say that these people who worship false God, they are not only ignorant, they are foolish. Can't they differentiate between a true God and a false God? You give it any name. But if it's a true God, you can give it the name of God. If it's not a true God, you're giving false God the name of God. Aren't they foolish? They are foolish. For example, if you want to buy some gold, there's a person who comes and wants to sell his gold jewelry to you. And he says, this is 24 karat sona. You know that sona in Hindi means gold. In Arabic, it is zahaba. You know it very well. But even after knowing that sona in Hindi is for gold, yet you will not just buy it like that. You will verify whether the sona, what is calling 24 karat sona, is it actually 24 karat gold or not. You will not just buy it off. What will you do? You will go to a goldsmith. 
and verify whether it is actually 24 karat sona or not. And after verifying with the touchstone, you know, I give the example of touchstone in my talk. He tells you it is fake. Though the jewelry was glittering, but all that glitter is not gold. You will verify before buying the sona whether it's actually sona or not. Why? Because you have to pay money for it. You know, you don't want to lose. Because you know, if you lose a thousand rupees or ten thousand rupees, it's precious. So why don't you do the same when anyone says this is God? You check it up with the touchstone. Which is the touchstone? Surah class. Chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Kul hu Allah hu ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah hu samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam milid balam yulad. He begets not nor is begotten. Walam yakul lahu kufanad. There is nothing like him. So anyone says this is God, you first check it up with the touchstone whether actually is God or not. If he fits in that definition, we have got no objection accepting that person who they are calling as Almighty God. For example, suppose some lunatic, he says that Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is Almighty God, a lunatic, if he says that. We know we Muslims, we love our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We love him, we will do anything for him, we obey him, even the non-Muslims. Michael H. Hart, when he wrote a book on 100 most influential people in the world, number one he gave to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. <laughs> yet, yet, in spite of that, you will use the touchstone, Surah class. Though we respect a maximum amongst all the human beings, yet, we will check with the touchstone, Surah class. Qul hu Allah hu ahad. Say is Allah one and only. Is Muhammad one and only? May peace be upon him. Allah has sent several messengers. He's not the only messenger. We agree he's the last and final. But Quran says you have to believe in all the messengers. Do not differentiate in the belief of the messengers. Second is Allah Husamad. Allah the absolute and eternal. We know that our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was a great human being, but he was not absolute and eternal. He toiled, he worked hard. His biography tells us that he was even stoned many times. He prayed to Almighty God. He was not absolute eternal. Third test is, Lam minis valam yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. We know that he was born in Mecca. He had a father and mother by the name of Abdullah and Amina. He had parents. He had children also. Fatima, may Allah be pleased with her. Ibrahim, may Allah be pleased with him. He had. He was begotten and he also beget. So he is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sure. Though we Muslim, we love our Prophet. We respect our Prophet. No Muslim in his true senses will ever say that Prophet Muhammad is Almighty God. Never. You know why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has seen to it that the Islamic creed, the Shahada, says La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. We say this five times a day minimum. In the Adhan, in the Yaqama, before Salah, we always say there is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. He is the servant of Allah. To see to it that no one, however much he may love, he may not equate him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever you are saying is Almighty God, you use the touchstone. Whether it be Jesus, whether it be Ram, whether it be Krishna, whether it be Buddha, whether it be Mahavir, use the touchstone. I have given you the touchstone. On the day of judgment, I can give shahada to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the thousands of people that were present here, I showed them how to use the touchstone. Now the God that you worship, <laughs> the God that you worship, you apply this formula of touchstone to that God. If it passes the touchstone, even I agree he is almighty God. If it doesn't pass, then you cannot call him God at all. Hope that answers the question.